Hello everyone, this is Metsis, the other half of Metsura, and I'm going to do a, kind of a semi-quick demo on how we do some of the texture work on this pack. Uh, I decided to do one that that's being played back at normal speed, because I've done time-lapse videos in the past, and sometimes you don't really get a whole lot of information out of those. So, So what we're going to be doing is... We're going to be taking the stone brick texture that we've already finished and we're going to be adding some um we're going to make a cracked stone version of this um and then also do some uh, texture variations and um i'll show you how you edit the json files in order to do that so but i'm going to go ahead and uh, we usually have just one photoshop file that contains all the variations for a texture and for the cracked uh, version. I think I'm just going to have it in the same file as well. I mean, why not? So I'm just clicking and dragging the group onto the new, usually it's new layer, but if you drag a, anything on there, it'll duplicate it. So, so I'm going to name this, call it cracked. Um, and I'm just going to hide every single one of these and start, um, start putting some cracks into this. Uh, but I want to look at the, let me go see what I'm working with. I'm going to pull up the vanilla stone cracked texture. Uh, as soon as I can find out what it's actually called. Uh, actually, I think I have the sorted by, I don't think I have the sorted by name. That would help. So we got stone, stone brick cracked. Okay, so here's here's what we got. Uh, here's what we're working with. I'm gonna put this on my other screen, so you won't be able to see it. Sorry, <laughs> but um, just to say that I have that on the other screen, so I can kind of look at it. Reference. Usually on the other screen, I have other stuff for reference. You know, images off of uh, you know Google and things like that. So, uh, but what I usually do is just so I can make sure everything's sharp and not blurry, uh, I will just use the pencil tool um, like this. So, I mean, yeah, granted, you don't get any anti-aliasing out of it, but if you turn the opacity down and then just kind of do several strokes over the same spot, the random variation in your hand actually gets that uh, anti-aliased effect down there. So, but at least this way I can, like, really control it. If I was going to do it with just the normal brush... Uh, it just, everything is just going to seem a little bit too soft. I can't get, like, I'm trying to paint, you know, one pixel. So it, it just get it just gets really hard when, even when you're trying to paint one pixel, you just can't quite, sometimes your cursor will be halfway in between and you get two pixels popping up or four, you know, it's, it's just, yeah, just, I just use the pencil tool. It makes, uh, stuff like that a lot easier. So. Uh, that's why I use the that's why I use the pencil tool. There we go. All right, so um, so I want to add some cracks into this. So I'm gonna go ahead and start painting just kind of dark on it. Uh, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm just gonna add a third layer because I don't know if we're gonna change this texture at all, but it would be kind of nice to have the cracked layer on top be separate in case we wanna. You know, kind of change it so right now i'm just adding where the crevices are going to be i'm going to press uh four on my keyboard so i can change the opacity because I, I don't want to use quite so many strokes um so i'm just kind of looking at uh the vanilla texture to company this in so kind of the big thing is um you, you never want to pin on the edge because as soon as you paint on the edge, then when you, you know, you can see you get a crease. I'm, that only works when I flatten the whole thing down. So, but suffice it to say, to do this, I'm I'm not going to paint anywhere on the edges. Because as soon as I start painting on the edges here, then that's going to create a crease when this transitions into a non-cracked texture, right? So, um, but yeah, that's kind of the rule number rule number one when you're drawing textures is don't paint on the edge. 
So I'm just going to add some cracks to this. Try to make it as much like, you know, vanilla as possible, you know, as far as the design is concerned. Uh, this is kind of creating an implied tangent. The crack actually wouldn't follow. Well, I don't know. Maybe it would. But I'm going to say, what am I thinking? I'm going to erase it. Ha, ah, because it's on a different layer. Um, yeah. So I'm just I'm just going to make the decision that, yeah, I don't want that to kind of flow into each other because they're not the same blocks, right? So, okay, so now I've got the texture to kind of match uh, the crack design on vanilla. So I'm just going to make any other little adjustments to the crack patterns to make it, you know, kind of more natural because it kind of cracks kind of branch out like trees. You know, they just kind of grow. So I'm going to add some of that. Again, trying to avoid avoid creating a, an implied tangent here. Okay, so now I'm going to darken up just the parts where it's going to be the thickest because the cracks grow, so I kind of want to have one side be thicker than the others. So maybe this will be the thickest part of the crack. So, all right. I'm liking where this is going. So basically what I've done is I've kind of just painted in the, the, the crevice shadow. Now what I want to do, so I'm just going to start painting with pure white, uh, put my opacity down to like 10%. Yeah, I'm not kidding. Um, and then start uh, putting in the the highlights for for the stone. Like, nope, that, that, there wouldn't be light on that side. It's my mistake. <laughs> uh, you got to be really conscious as far as what the 3D form is doing when you're painting it. So, because otherwise you'll just start getting stuff that just doesn't look, doesn't look realistic. Or it seems like it's a, a bump when it should be a crack, you know, sort of a thing. So, but I mean, it's pretty much this way in Minecraft, but universally we got the light source coming in from this way, right? So, which kind of makes it easy when we're painting, but it's just something we got to always keep aware of. So basically what that means is that this angle would be catching a lot of light because it's pointing right up against the light source, whereas, you know, this probably wouldn't so much. Actually, that... Um, I'm going to delete that. Yeah, because this, this wouldn't really be catching a whole lot of light because it's kind of at an angle. So. But I think so far so good. Okay, and sometimes I just kind of have to take a look back and see what we got. So I like where that's going. Uh, so I'm going to switch to black. See if maybe I can darken up the opposite side, but I don't want to overdo it because um, I already know if I start darkening the other side, then everything will just start kind of looking soft. So because the crevice shadow could already be kind of um, interpreted as, a, you know, a surface fa facing away from the light source. I think this is actually pretty good. I don't know if I want to... probably don't want to overwork this. Um, I think that's good. So what I'm going to do, before I start creating any other variations, is I'm going to... well, I'm going to save the file, and then I'm going to save as. So we got a file that has all of our textures that we've already done, just the Photoshop files, and then we created a little shortcut that brings us to the... Um, assets, Minecraft, texture, blocks, you know, th th this is where all the game files are at. So, so here you can see the small ones are the vanilla ones, the big ones are ones that we finished. So, yeah, we're getting there. And let's see if I can find the cracked. There we go. So I'm going to save. Yes, I want to replace. So these settings are fine. 
And then I'm going to load up Minecraft. Options, resource pack. Remove it. Add it again. Click a done. And that forces it to reload. And there's the, uh, there's the texture in there. So yeah, it looks pretty good. Um, I don't think I would really change too much. I think some of the cracks might be a little overdoing it. Um, maybe I want to have some bricks or some part of the bricks missing. I think that actually might be kind of cool. So, so what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll start adding some variations. And uh, let me show you how to do that in with the JSON. So if you go to... So in your resource pack, when you have assets, Minecraft, so there's two parts. This The first part is your block states. Uh, and then the second part is your model. So we want to go into block states first. We want to find the cracked stone uh, block state. And no, it's not always the same as the texture name. So stone brick. Actually, it might be under stone brick. No, it's not under stone brick. Um, well, worst comes to worst, you can always just search. Just search for cracked. There we go. Okay, so it looks like we actually, this is good to know, we got two, so, oh, so, oh, so it starts with cracked. Okay. That's good to know. Cracked. Okay, so we got two different block states. We got the monster egg, which I'm assuming is when you're in a, um, a stronghold, uh, I guess that's what they call it. When you crack open a brick and then out comes silverfish, that's what this is. So we want to have random versions of that too. Or maybe we don't. I mean, if we wanted to, we could probably have a separate model that has little eyeballs poking out through the cracks. And it's like, oh, that's silverfish. Don't don't hit it. <laughs> of course, that would change the gameplay. But that, I don't know, maybe that would be a feature some people will want. I have a, have a completely different texture for uh, um, silverfish bomb silver fish spawn blocks so but for now we'll just open up this one all right so variants it's only referencing one model and what we want to do is we want to start adding um some extra variants so just before this little squiggly bracket before the word model we're going to add a open square bracket we're going to put that on the new line and just so we don't forget we're going to close the bracket and then all we got to do is just copy and paste this, paste, 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 and then make sure you add a comma after all these lines, except for the last one. Um, because if you don't do this, then you're, you're going to start seeing um, some broken textures. So, and then I'm going to say, all right, we want this to be model two and then model three. Actually, I think I only want to do three variations for now, so I'm just going to delete this last line. So we can always add more later. I'm going to save that. Now, what happens is because this is now referencing models that don't exist, if we go back and reload our texture pack, um, you'll find that nothing has changed. Okay, that's weird. Hold on a sec. <laughs> Cracked stone brick. And that's the model. Actually, did I make these already? Well, that's maybe kind of funny. It could also be the very strange possibility that no random ones have spawned. No. I might have actually made these already. Well, let's take a look. All right, so, so that's in our block states. Let's go over to our models folder. So we got our stone brick cracked. Here's our file here. Um, actually, I think with block states, okay, yeah, I, I remember what goes on. If it can't find a model, then it just won't load it. It won't even bother. But if you have a model file that's referencing an image that won't exist, then it breaks. So, all right, so I'm gonna take this file and I'm just gonna copy it. I'm just gonna paste it a few times. So Windows is gonna add a you know, a copy and then a copy two. I'm gonna rename that to be Stone Brick Cracked Two, then Stone Brick Cracked Three, and then open these up, and then I'm gonna add a, a two at the end of that 
file name. So this is in the model file. That's when we start referencing the texture name. So I'm going to save that then open that one. Add a three onto that and then save it. All right. So now if we load, refresh the texture pack, then we start should start seeing purple squares or not. What the heck? <laughs> uh, stone brick cracked. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I don't know why it's uh, not showing up purple. Because it should be. <laughs> Anyways, all right. Well, let's start. Let's start painting some of the other uh, some of the other variations. So basically, I'm just going to uh, redo those steps. Um, pick black. I'm gonna bring this back up to like twenty or something. So this one, I'm maybe this will have like a lot less you know, cracks in it. Um, maybe we got a part right here. It's got a big giant crack and let's just, we can make this part missing <laughs> if we want to just have it completely gone. So there we go. Make the underside of it darker. So we got that shadow thing going. So again, I want to make the lines darker the closer you are to the crack, and then less so further out. So, okay. Got some more cracks. I'll make them branch out. Okay, and I think I'll be good for that one. So let's uh, add some light. So you can see how some of these textures can actually not take a whole lot of time. So sometimes I kind of have to lean back and kind of squint and see overall, is this texture going to be reading well from a distance, you know? Because sometimes stuff will... Well, I mean, everything up close just looks like pixels, right? Of course. Um, so it can get it can get kind of tricky. So be, be, all the same principles that apply to making um, artwork when you have a full set of paints, or you know, you're you're painting it digitally in Photoshop, and you got all the resolution to deal with. The same artistic principles apply. It's just you know now you're working with a a pixel grid a mosaic so all that stuff still applies i add another crack right here just to make it look good all right i think that's uh adequate and then i'll just uh move on to the next one actually i might as well just save this now so i'm gonna go Save as, double click on my little shortcut so it puts me in the right uh, folder for the actual resource pack. Uh, sometimes I can just type in the name, just add the underscore crack to the end, but sometimes it's easier for me to just scroll down and find it. Certainly, it makes it a little lazier for me to do it that way. So I can do as many random variations as I want, but usually we stop at five. Um, three is a pretty good number, but you can still see some repeating patterns. I'm gonna have this part missing. And of course I darken it up here.
make the crack, crack nice and thick. Actually, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a whole part of this break just kind of like coming out like it's about to slide out. In fact, what I'll do, get the lasso tool and, and just kind of offset it a little bit. This might work. Helps if I... Yeah, we'll see how that works. This might be cool. We'll see how this works. So what this means is that I'm going to have a lot of light being cut here. Should have brought my opacity down before I started painting. I usually try to not try not to do too many strokes at the same time. I mean, the fewer number of strokes, the better. But um, start painting on that top layer. But for this, I think I'm okay. So now I want to have the corners catch more light than the uh, you know than anything else because that's what a lot of people forget like if you're drawing just a simple geometric shape like a cube um, you know the corner of an object actually collects a lot of light too so I mean that's something we did with the uh, if we go to the smooth granite texture so you can see how we added just kind of a light highlight here because this corner well we'll just pretend that this corner is actually going to be receiving more light you know, because it's a beveled edge. So so we do that with pretty much everything that we do on the pack, um, especially when you have, like, hard edges like that. You know, it's something that a lot of beginner artists uh, forget to add in there, and it adds a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of detail or a lot of realism to what you're doing. Making sure light catches on corners and light disappears in the cracks. So... Yeah, in fact, this I'm just gonna I'm gonna pretend this is a, a part that's been broken off too. But we can have a part that's broken off here. And we have some cracks. Some cracks here. Yeah, I'm liking I'm liking it. Actually, I kind of want to do that with some of the other ones too. <laughs> that looks pretty neat. Happy accident. Well, that wasn't really an accident. That was that was kind of planned, but you know, you know what I mean. I, I like how it looks. Let's just say that. I like how that looks. Okay, but I don't want to. I don't want to add too much detail to this, or, or, or too much cracks, because the the other one that I did was uh, the first one was pretty crack heavy, so. Again, trying to figure out which side of the shape is going to be catching the most light. It's, that's why, like, on these corners, I make it lighter. So. All right, let's... Yeah, I don't want to do too much here. Okay, okay, I think. Oh, let's uh, add a little bit here. Slatten that up just a little bit. Wrong side. <laughs> there we go. All right. Uh, cool. So I think. This will pretty much do it. There's one part that I want to make a little bit darker. Where was that? This one part I want to add a... Gah, I forget. Yeah, I forget. This I kind of want to be a little bit darker. Okay. All right, so now let me uh, go back to one of these previous ones and 
Yeah, I want these. I want these to pop a little bit more. Maybe I can do that to the first one. Maybe I can make these kind of pop out half more, have more three D, more of a three D effect around it. Because that one it looks like it's coming out, so that's pretty cool. So maybe I'll do that with just. Uh, Maybe this segment right here, make it look like it's kind of coming out. Got kind of more of a more of a shadow around it. Make it look like this is really. Yeah, that helps. Okay. All right, so now because I updated the original, so file save as, do this whole rigmarole. So that's the first one. And then this one is the second one. Usually I have these numbered on the side, but that's all right. And then this is the third one. I don't have one for this yet, so I got to rename it. Okay, so now go back into the Minecraft, reload the pack, cross our fingers and hope we see variations. We do not see any variations, so something in my JSON file is wrong. And it also explains why it didn't look broken before. So, so much for that little uh, uh, thing right there. Wonder if these are just uh, referenced wrong. Let's see. Oh yeah, that should work. Oh, I'm placing the monster egg version ah uh, <laughs> okay that's right right okay i just looked at my inventory and i'm placing the monster egg oh boy okay let's 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 fix this <laughs> they look identical that explains a lot okay that's monster egg that's the normal version Okay, get rid of that. Okay, make sure these none of these are the monster egg spawn. Okay, so now, there we go. Okay, now we're starting to see some variations here. All right, so there we go. That works. So now we can see we got cracked stone, but it's not all, it's not all the same. So, Adding, yeah, having texture variations, well, I mean, specifically the model variations, um, but having texture variations, or model variations, whatever, it's, it, it does break, help break up the monotony of, um, you know, the repeating patterns that you have in the, in, in your resource pack. So, um, so I think that should do it for this video. Thank you for watching.